All right, guys, so I'm a little late on this. I had a pretty hectic weekend, but there were a couple of major stories from last week that I honestly didn't see many people talking about. The first one being that OpenAI and Oracle have signed a $300 billion cloud deal, one of the biggest deals in AI history. Basically, OpenAI will be paying Oracle roughly $300 billion over the next five years to rent cloud infrastructure. As you can imagine, this is huge news for Oracle. Their stock literally jumped up 40% in a day after this announcement. And their co-founder and CTO, Larry Ellison, surpassed Elon Musk as the richest man in the world because of it. So clearly, the AI data center spending is not slowing down. In fact, there was also this report stating OpenAI expects to burn $115 billion through 2029. This is 80 billion higher than the company previously expected, and a lot of this is likely going towards renting cloud servers, which, given there's a massive GPU shortage, definitely makes sense. But I'm not sure how long this will be the case, because as we've already reported on this channel, OpenAI is now working on their own AI chips with the help of Broadcom, so definitely something to keep a close eye on. Now, in some more OpenAI news, I probably should have covered this as its own video, but again, I had a pretty insane weekend. But anyway, OpenAI has apparently solved hallucinations. Now, in reality, they didn't actually solve hallucinations, but they claim to have figured out why hallucinations happen, and as a result, can potentially weed them out. As they write here, Hallucinations persist partly because current evaluation methods set the wrong incentives. While evaluations themselves do not directly cause hallucinations, most evaluations measure model performance in a way that encourages guessing rather than honesty about uncertainty. Think about it like a multiple choice test. If you do not know the answer but take a wild guess, you might get lucky and be right. But leaving it blank guarantees a zero. In the same way, when models are graded only on accuracy, the percentage of questions they get exactly right, they are encouraged to guess rather than say, I don't know. So this actually makes a lot of sense. It's not so much a problem with the actual models, but more how we test them. As you can see here, in the actual paper, they show that the majority of benchmarks do not give partial credit for the model saying, I don't know. And so we're without realizing it, training the models to guess even when they're uncertain. OpenAI suggests some sort of confidence target or threshold in order to combat this. And you can read more into it here, I'll link the paper below. But essentially, we now know why hallucinations happen, which is pretty big news. And finally, before we move on from OpenAI, I thought this was worth mentioning. They're backing a new animated feature film made largely with AI. The film will be called Critters. It has a budget of less than $30 million and is expected to take only about 9 months to make. The goal is to prove it can make films faster and cheaper than Hollywood with the help of AI. And while OpenAI is not directly involved in the making of the film, they are heavily backing it and supplying their AI tools. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how this film is received by the public. In other AI news, Albania becomes the first country in history to appoint an AI minister for government. Its name is Diela, which means sunshine, and it will handle public procurement. So yeah, AI is now taking government jobs too. And speaking of AI taking jobs, the CEO of Anthropic, Dario Amode, is doubling down on his warning that AI will gut entry-level jobs. It says here, in May, he told Axios he believes AI could eliminate up to 50% of entry-level office jobs within 5 years, potentially pushing unemployment to 10-20%, to and that industry and governments are sugarcoating what's coming. And now, he's basically doubling down on this, and points to entry-level white-collar work being hit the hardest. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard warnings like these. And if you've been following AI's trajectory, you know exactly why this is a real concern. I mean, this is already happening. But while Dario is focused more on the short term, perhaps rightfully so, others, like Elon Musk, are looking much further down the road. And his take is a lot more extreme. I think, I think there's a natural logarithmic function associated with the amount of compute. So 
then like say for argument's sake, like 10x more compute will double the intelligence. Maybe that's, that, that might be a rough rule of thumb. Uh, but, you know, that still means that, you know, you go from 100 IQ to 200 IQ. It's still a pretty, pretty big deal. Um, so, uh, and, and I, th I think we'll see intelligence continue to scale all the way up to where, you know, most of the power of the sun is harnessed for compute and then ultimately most of the power of the galaxy. You know, sort of Kardashev 2, Kardashev 3 scale uh, compute. Um, so I guess once you think of artificial intelligence not as sort of this, you know, a destination that you reach, but really uh, as part of the overall escalation of intelligence um, that, that, that we are, are aware of. Um, you know, human intelligence has also scaled as, you've have, uh, as the population has increased um, and we've been able to store more and more information. Uh, human intelligence has scaled. Now, human, because of population declines and low growth rate, human intelligence is, is somewhat plateauing um, and will actually decline. And my guess is that I, I, I think that we might have AI smarter than any single human at anything as soon as next year. Wow. Um, yeah. and, 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 then, and then probably within five, like say 2030, probably AI is smarter than the sum of all humans. Do you think, do you think humans are on the decline because the AI is evolving? Do you think there's this evolution of the ecosystem on earth that's underway that we don't really understand the structure of what's going on but maybe yeah maybe we implicitly know that it's coming um yeah i i i mean i hope the birth rates turn around i'm a, I'm a big proponent of uh, increased birth rate uh, obviously. Uh, <laughs> well, are you doing anything example. about it or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to set a good example. <laughs> so yeah, it's important to think about this exponentially rather than linearly. And when you do, you realize that what we're seeing now isn't exactly new. Human processes have been getting automated for decades, really for centuries. From the Industrial Revolution replacing manual labor to computers replacing clerical work, each wave has taken something humans used to do and turned it into machinery, or software, or now, intelligence itself. As the years go on, our abilities become less unique and more replicable. And I'm not sure that's entirely a good thing. I mean, automation has always pushed progress. But it also strips away what makes our work feel meaningful. There's two sides to every coin. And now, speaking of progress, one of the clearest examples this week came from ByteDance's new image generation model, SeaDream 4.0. This model is actually insane. We are far beyond the point you can even remotely tell that an image is AI. It's just way too good now. And the significant part is the pace. If image generation has gone from blurry nonsense to photorealistic perfection in just a few years, what happens when that same curve hits reasoning, planning, or even science? That's why people think AGI could be right around the corner. But it's not everyone that thinks that. Demis Hassabis, Google DeepMind's CEO, believes we are still a handful of breakthroughs away from true AGI. And his timeline is a little further than most. Take a look. You often hear some of our competitors talk about uh, you know, these modern systems to, that we have today are PhD intelligences. I think that's a nonsense. They're not, they're not PhD intelligences. They have some capabilities that are PhD level, um, but they're not in general uh, capable, uh, in, and that's what, exactly what general intelligence should be, of, of performing across the board at the PhD level. In fact, as we all know, interacting with today's chatbots, if you pose the question in a certain way, they can make simple mistakes with even like high school maths um, and, and simple counting. So uh, that shouldn't be possible for a true AGI system. So I think that we are maybe, you know, I would say sort of five to 10 years away um, from having uh, an AGI system that's capable 
capable of doing those things. Um, another thing that's missing is continual learning, this ability to like online teach the system something new um, or, or, some, or adjust its behavior in some way. And so a lot of these, I think, core capabilities are still missing and m maybe scaling will get us there. But I feel if I was to bet, I think there are probably one or two missing breakthroughs that are still required. Um, and will come over the next uh, five, five or so years. So on one side, you've got Musk saying next year, and on the other, Demis saying next decade. What's not in question though, is that things are moving fast, and inevitably, we will reach AGI. Right now, everyone's racing toward it. The lead keeps shifting between the big players, but if you think exponentially, it's less about if and more about when. And judging by the pace, from trillion dollar cloud deals to models like Seadream 4.0 that already feel impossible, that when is coming a lot sooner than most people are ready for. Anyways, that's it for this week's recap. Thanks for watching, hopefully you got something out of it. And I'm especially curious to know where you guys land on those Elon Musk and Demis Hassabis clips. Do you think AGI is closer to a year away or a decade? And why? Also, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and as always, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one.